Hi friends, let's dive into five AI papers and projects this week. We'll take a look at how do the fundamental models score on the transparency index? How do self-reg improves retrieval with self-reflections? How does DALI 3 work under the hood? How is FUYU AB so impressive in understanding charts and documents? And finally, we'll take a look at the most fun and potentially the most impactful project, Habit 3.0, for robot human interactions. Let's get started. Researchers from Stanford, MIT, and Princeton published the Foundation Model Transparency Index to assess the transparency of foundation model developers. Transparency is important because it is essential for accountability, innovation, and governance. There are 100 indicators across three domains. The upstream indicators look at the computational resources, data, and labor used to build the model. The model indicators look at model's architecture, capabilities, and risk. The downstream indicators look at the model's impact on users, any updates to the models, and the policies that govern its use. The transparency scores of the 10 foundational models range from 12 to 54, with Meta's Llama 2 scoring the highest and Amazon's Titan Text scoring the lowest. The overall scores are pretty low, indicating that all developers have significant room for improvement. There are three clusters, four will above the mean, three around the mean, and three below the mean. I'm a little surprised that OpenAI is well above the mean because ChatGPT is not open source. Looking across the domains, scores are consistently the worst for the upstream domain, particularly the data, data labor, and compute subdomains. No company scores any points for indicators about data creators, the copyright and license status of the data, and mitigations related to copyright. I think this is perhaps the most important point that people really need to pay more attention to data copyright. Most companies do not reveal basic information like model size, nor do they explain how and why they make certain release decisions. I find this is a little weird because I thought most models released information on model size. Next, capabilities, limitations, risks, and model mitigations characterize a model's potential social impact. Only two companies demonstrate limitations. No one talked about potential harm or model mitigations. No one provides transparency into the affected marketing sectors or individuals. Open developers are more transparent than closed developers, mostly because open developers are more transparent on upstream indicators, but not on downstream indicators. Some companies have highly correlated scores, like the three members of the Frontier Model Forum, two companies that release both model weights and data, and the four lowest scoring companies. Meta is not highly correlated to anyone. So overall, hopefully this index will drive progress on governance via industry standards and regulatory interventions. If you're interested, you can find all the 100 indicators in Appendix B, there is definition, notes, and references for each of the indicators. self rag is a framework that learns to retrieve, generate, and critique to enhance language models' output quality and factuality. In the regular RAG framework, when we ask a question, how did U.S. state get their names? We use a retriever to retrieve K documents, usually from a vector database that represent our knowledge base. And then we add the retrieved relevant docs to the prompt. And large language models can generate some answers based on the context. However, by retrieving and incorporating a fixed number of retrieved passages, regardless of whether it's necessary or relevant, can lead to unhelpful response generation. self reg improves the response quality with several reflection tokens. Retrieve, indicating when to retrieve, is relevant, is supported, and is useful. Here is how it works. self reg first decodes a retrieval token to see if we actually need retrieval for this prompt, because we may not always need retrieval. If we do need retrieval, we retrieve the top k relevant docs like the regular reg, and then add each retrieved document to the prompt 
and generate answers in parallel. All these generated answers start with a critique token indicating whether the retrieved docs are relevant or not. And then at the end of the answer, the model generates another critique token indicating whether the retrieved docs support the generated answer. So these two tokens basically solve the problem of whether RAG retrieves the relevant information and whether it generates relevant answers. Then the final step is to critique the output and choose the best answer. There are two models to train in self-RAG, the critique model C and the generator model M. The critique models generate these reflection tokens. So they basically prompt GPT-4 to generate reflection tokens. For example, to generate the retrieve token, which indicates whether we should do retrieval or not, they prompt GPT-4 with this instruction. Given an instruction, make a judgment on whether finding some external documents from the web helps to generate a better, a better response. They collected 4,000 to 20,000 training data for each type of tokens and then trained based on LAMA 27B. To train the generator model, they augmented the data with the critique model first and then augmented the output with the reflection tokens. Results showed that self-reg outperforms ChatGPT or LAMA 2 across six tasks and outperforms retrieved augmented models in most tasks. The authors have also open sourced the code. I'm definitely interested in trying this out. Adapt AI open sourced FIU 8B. It has several cool capabilities. It can understand charts. In this question, it can correctly answer. Aidan Gillen acted in how many series from this super complicated chart. It can also find that UK has 28 days of paid vacation from this chart. It can also understand documents. This document listed cities with good job outlook and also bad job outlook. FIU was able to answer the question, which metro in California has a good job outlook? This is incredible because it can not only understand the text and also the thumbs up image and able to figure out the relationship between California and the cities. FIU can also understand diagrams and answer this question, if something happens, which one would starve? What's more exciting is there are new capabilities in their internal models. First is the OCR capabilities to extract text from a bounding box or extract bounding box that contains text. Second is localization and QA capabilities. It can locate things on the screen, answer the information about the second email on the screen, and answer location relationship question from a map. So how does this model work exactly? It's a small multimodal model with, sm with simpler architecture and training procedure designed for digital agents so that it can support many tasks. It is fast and performs well at benchmarks. The model architecture looks really elegant from a high level. Image patches are fed into a linear projection layer, which then goes directly into a decoder on the transformer. This simplified architecture doesn't have a separate image encoding that other multimodal models have. Other models also have a large number of separate training stages where the image encoder is trained separately. Regarding model performance, they looked at natural image question answering, image captioning, and scientific diagrams understanding. FUYU performs well on all these metrics and even outperforms Quain and Palm on two out of three metrics. So it is not the best model, but it is a really good small size model. Interestingly, they found some issues with the benchmarks. For example, FUYU answered correctly about these two images, but did not get scored correctly. So it looks like that the FIU model could even score higher on the benchmarks. If you would like to try on the model, I created this notebook with both the original model and the sharded 4-bit model for you to try. OpenAI recently added DALI 3 to ChatGPT and released the DALI 3 paper. Let's take a look at the details of the paper. The main idea of this paper is that the prompt following abilities of text to image models can be improved by training on highly descriptive generated image captions. Prompt following is a challenge in the image generation systems, and this issue has been pointed out in several previous works. 
Its paper proposed a new approach to address prompt following that is caption improvement. Because the fundamental issues is the poor quality of text and image pairing of the data sets they were trained on. Important details are often missing from the image descriptions, including presence of objects, the positions of objects, common sense details, and the text in the image. So they address these issues using synthetically generated captions. The first step is to build an image captioner. It is a language model maximizing the log likelihood of the next token, conditioning on the previous tokens, the parameters of the captioner and the image. Because the images have so many pixel values, they choose to condition on the pre-trained clip image embedding function instead. The second step is to fine tune the captioner. They built two data sets in this step. First is to build a small data set of captions that describe only the main subject of the image. The captions are called short synthetic captions. They created another data set of long, highly descriptive captions describing everything in the image. The captions are called descriptive synthetic captions. Here are some examples of the images, the short synthetic captions, and the long synthetic captions. And this is what our improved recaptioned data sets look like. This next section talks about evaluation. Because text-to-image diffusion models have overfit issues, they blend synthetic captions with ground truth captions, and the blending happens at the data sampling time. They trained T5 conditional image diffusion models on the same data set of images, but on different descriptions. They used the CLIP score to evaluate the result. Here's how the CLIP score is computed. We have an image encoder model to produce image embeddings. And then we have a text encoder to create text embeddings for the image caption. And then we just calculate the cosine distance between the two embeddings. They trained three models on ground truth captions, 95% short synthetic captions, and 95% descriptive synthetic captions. They found that models trained on synthetic captions achieve better performance, especially for the long ones. Now the model are adapt to the highly descriptive captions. We can use GPT-4 to upsample any captions into a highly descriptive one. Here are some examples with the original captions and the upsampled captions. So DALI-3 is basically trained on the data with 95% synthetic captions. They found DALI-3 outperforms DALI-2 and Stable Diffusion XL on the CLIP score, the draw bench, and the T2I comp bench. It also outperforms Midjourney and others on all human evaluations. So that's basically the DALI-3 paper. The most fun project this week is probably Habitat 3.0 an embodied AI simulation platform for studying human-robot interaction. This could be a significantly step forward in creating AI agents capable of doing housework. Meta made a good video describing this project, so I'm just going to play the video here. Social embodied agents that assist and cooperate with humans. It supports both humanoid avatars and robots, thus allowing the study of collaborative human-robot tasks in home-like environments. The first task, called social navigation, involves the robot finding and following a humanoid avatar while maintaining a safe distance. The second task, social rearrangement, involves the robot working collaboratively with the humanoid avatar to rearrange a set of objects from their initial placement to their desired location. The agents must coordinate to achieve this goal together as efficiently as possible. In summary, Habitat 3.0 offers three major contributions, accurate humanoid simulation, human-in-the-loop infrastructure, and collaborative tasks. This research is meaningful because previous embodied AI agents are hermits acting solitary with the assumption that changes to the environment occur solely due to the action of the AI agents. This paper aims to develop social embodied agents that assist and cooperate with humans, and also training and testing such social agents on hardware with real humans has a lot of challenges. A simulation platform can overcome these challenges and can faster iterate on the algorithms. Finally, this project is open source. Here is the repo if you are interested. So 
that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.